Good morning. What we've discovered is a massive four par with our model railway electrics. We've got isolators here because we run digital and analog. So there is no power being fed directly to here. Now normally what happens, we've got PCO, I think they're PL11s, here feeding the power through. So normally no problem. But when you're running digital and you want to bring a digital locomotive through here and the one you have, bring it and hold it around there, you can't because there's no power. Because the power's being fed up there, no power there, and because you've got an isolator there, and you'll see when this low cuff, when it goes slowly, because I don't want it to thrash, thrash round and anything happens. And because you've got an isolator there, I was just going over it, it will stop. But bear in mind, even though there is not, not, no power going through here, which is enough to run a locomotive, or not enough power going through, it will still blow up an analog transformer. So don't be fooled into thinking because, ah, oh, there's no power for the locomotive. There you go, and you can see it stopped and the lights have gone out. So basically what I've got to do is I've got to put an external source of power into here. I've got to power this track up separately. Now what I normally use for power is Pico PL80s, where you just put them in like that, they're part of the fish plate, and I use them for 90% of the power. But to do that would mean pulling up the track. Now here is Flexi Track, and it took me an age to get it right, to get it spot on. And I pull it up, and I've got to get it right again. In fact, it's not all flexi track, that is, but that's not. And it, it will take an age to get it right. And it's flexi track here, and I've got it absolutely perfect, so I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to do it another way, which is a little more complicated, but I'm not disturbing the track, and I do not want to disturb that track. It took me ages to get it level, where the board's not level. It's going to take me longer to lift the track, put PL11s in, than it is to solder wires to the track. And I'll show you how we do it. Okay, we've got our power cables here. I've stripped them. You put them in flux. I'm now going to tin them. And tinning is quite simply... melting the solder onto the flux. So it covers the wire. And there you go, you can see it happening now. God, that is hot. And what it's doing, what you're basically doing, is you're just melting, melting solder onto the wire so that it can connect to the track easily, more easily. And you can see there it is, that's tinning basically. I'm going to do the other one. There you go. And you can see the wire is now really being covered with solder and that's basically that's tinning see so you've got solder now on the wire a bit more you can see there it goes make sure you keep your we've got two windows open here so it's well ventilated and you can see there that's silver Thank you. Okay, what you need to do next is decide where to put your power wires. Obviously it's going to be between here and where it's isolated. We've chosen here. 
quite simply because we can get at the wires easily. You've got a lot of wires underneath from everything else. We don't want to damage anything. So basically what you do is you just drill a hole by your track. So you go through, down you go. And that's it. Simple as that. And next we'll check to see if our wires fit. Do you want to get the hoover? Over there. Just. We're going to see if our holes are big enough for the wires. We have previously hoovered up where we've drilled so we can just push them through and there we go. And as I say, when you're drilling down, be careful you're not drilling into other wires you've done. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, pulling, stop, perfect. And make sure you're not drilling down into something else you've done. And also make sure that the black and the red are the right way around. Keep everything uniform. If you don't, you are going to catch a cold. Just put it down as fast as you can, perfect. Spot on, thank you. Okay, before you connect the wires, you file the outside of the track. Track cleaner isn't enough to get all the dirt and rust off, and I've already done it, but I'm just showing this so it's nice and shiny. I forgot to film it earlier. Then you put flux on the outside of the track. Now you can do it either way, I mean you can put the, put the wire close to the track and, and uh, manoeuvre solder into position. I've done that before, I've done a video of that. This should melt the solder. I hope, here we go. Isn't too clever, is it? Turn the heat up a bit. Tell you what, get me some solder. Just put it on. See if we can do it. Do it. Just put it there. side. Now put it now that's soldered it on but there's no way a locomotive is going to run on that but that is easy to sort out I'll show you that in a minute and we'll do the other piece of track the other piece of wire, sorry. I'm going to get me some solder, I'm going to solder it. Put it on top of the wire. Keep pushing it on. Good 
baking soda. I do not understand why this soda, why I'm having a problem connecting this to the track. Loads of heat. Anyway, that is not how I want it to be. I'm going to try and do what you do with, with when you've got a situation like this is I'm going to wind the heat right up. I don't know why. So this should be a two minute job. And it's turning into a nightmare, but I'm showing you in real time. It's better. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how you clean this up, which is quite easy. Use a little file. On the solder, be gentle with it. It's far too much there, far too much. I'm still at odds as to why The solder wouldn't melt where I tinned it. That there is that I think is pretty good. That's not so bad there. Track's pretty level. But here that's awful. Nothing's gonna go around that. The solder's soft, comes down fairly easily. You, what you do is you get your hoover, you hoover up all your filings. Do you want to hoover it? No, I'm not really happy with that. Not really, there's a lot showing. But I'll show you a little trick. Do you want me to get me the Dremel? And the cutting disc. That's it. Show you a little trick here. I'm not happy with all that showing there like that. So Have a screwdriver. Yep, that's fine. And a hammer.
There you go, gone. And what I can do, is I can soften that a little bit. That is on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There we go. This should have been a five second job. Anyway, God, I've made that difficult. But there we go, there's our wires done. And we'll show you how we hide those. Still not really happy with that there. get the hoover. This should have been a simple job, a five second job this should have been. Turning to a nightmare. But anyway we've got the track powered now. Just to make sure it actually, things actually will run on it. No, it's catching. Further down. That's better. That's a lot better. It's amazing how what should be a simple job, that's it. It's amazing what should be a simple job can turn into a nightmare. Can I have the files, please? And this has turned into a nightmare. And I'm still baffled as to why. My soldering iron. Didn't melt the solder. There you go. Now what you'd need to use is a finest of files now on this track where you've done it because what's going to happen is it's going to file the wheels of your... Okay what you use is really fine emery cloth on your track. 
for the simple reason where you've used a file what that will do is that will act as a file on the wheels of your loco and you can probably see I hope that this is now lovely and lovely smooth and shiny the idea is you've got to get the track as smooth as it was before you fiddled with it and I can see that is lovely and smooth it just, so it just looks like shiny metal if you've tried and fired any solder down and you do not go over it with it's got to be the finest emery cloth you can buy really really fine because if you don't you're going to run your locos over where you've used a file and in effect it's going to file the wheels and you can probably see that track is just like it was before no file marks in it just lovely and smooth simple to do can I have the hoover please you make sure we see your hoover up any mess because you get the filings in your low coat you get it's going to file inside your loco and you're going to wonder why it doesn't run and look at that beautiful and you could see that was a nightmare it shouldn't have been it should have been a doddle but it was a nightmare and you can see there over the track where we've done it that is lovely and smooth and always use something light to check track there's no point in putting something heavy on there because it's just going to go over fine if you've got something light it's going to flick up and flick off and look at that beautiful and smooth the track's smooth and that was an absolute mare but you can see that's perfect thank you okay what we're doing now we're just going to hide the majority of these wires and use a bit of ballast and you can see that's fine put them either side of the sleeper now bear in mind when you're looking at this you're looking through a high quality 4k camera And you can see there, you can barely see, and we're doing it uncut so that, you know, there's no cheating. 50-50 mix, UPVA, you put it on, let it soak in, which it will eventually. And there you go. And that's pretty much it. And if I wind this back, apart from where the white is, where's the wires? Okay, we're going to move on to the next stage. Okay, now to wire this up, we're using an on off on switch. Now, the reason being is, is you need to totally isolate the power when you put it on. If you just use an on-off switch, you will get bleed and blow up an analog transformer. Now, look underneath, what you have is, here, you have the track, power going to the track, here, from your analog trans to your analog transformer, and here to your digital transformer. Now bear in mind when you throw it that way it's these wires here be it analog or digital. You throw it that way hold it better that is to whatever transformer you decide to put it on and that is off. And What that does is it totally isolates the power. You cannot afford any bleed 
because a digital transformer will blow up an analog transformer and an analog transformer will short out a digital transformer or controller, whatever wording you wish to use. So now we're going to move on to sorting the wires out. Okay, we're going to do the one of the spade connectors. We're just going to show you one. Strip the wire, which we've done. Simple stuff. And what we're going to do now is solder it to a spade connector. So we dip that in flux. Douche. Can you hold that for me? Get the solder. Put it on. Put it on top of the wire, lovey. Oh, you keep catching my hand. Okay, take it away. Take it away, the solder. And there we go. That was easy. You can see there. Now what you do now is you crimp it. Nice and tight and you can see that's on good and tight. And what you do is you've got to insulate it quite simply because it's analog and digital power done thank you okay hey, what I'm going to do I'm going to tin the end of the wires so I'm going to put them into the junction box there's no splay put that on the end of this iron that's it, and that's it tinned. Easy peasy. Okay, what we're going to have to do is decide where to put this switch. However, I can't remember what size drill bit we use. So if you can get me, I think it's a 19. A small one. No, it's not that one. It's not that one. It's a smaller one. Could be that one. Too big. Too big, a smaller one. Smallest one we have. There we go. It's a 12. So basically, we needed to find out how big a hole we got to drill. For the simple reason that we've forgotten it's so long since we've actually drilled anything like this and I'm showing this I could cut this video a lot and it's difficult to decide what is best to do because people get bored quick but on the other hand if I show you the trials and tribulations then you get an idea of what happens in the real world now can I have the switch please now we've got to decide where it's going to go we have it too close to here, there's a risk of knocking it. So we've decided to put it there. Look, it's not ideal. We're not, we know it's not totally ideal because it's close to where the inner is. But, you know, we don't have a lot of options. Can't put it there because there's a bar mounting under there. There, somebody walks by, you're going to knock it. Uh, you know, it's just not going to work up there. So I've decided to put it there. So I can have the drill. Large drill, please. And as I say, we're showing you, you in real time as much as we can. We'd obviously if we drop something on the floor and we've got to hunt around for it for hours. So we're going to have a look at where we're going to drill the hole. Which is going to, going to put it about there. So we've got a bit of space between those two switches. As I say, it's not ideal spacing. But it is what it is, and there we go. And now what we need to do is just hoover up the mess, please. Don't kick the tripod. And there's our hole. 
Now, now we've done that. Now what we're up against with this, with this switch, where have I put the switch? Here it is. It's not going to go straight up in, in, into here. Because of the nut underneath. If I show you, the wood is too thick for it to go through. So what I've got to do is, I've got to use a bigger one of these and make the hole wider. So it will go through. And I'm going to use an 18. So what I'll be doing that is I'll be doing that from underneath. And basically, it's just, now you've got to be careful doing this because if you go through the wood, you're going to catch a cold. But basically, it's just putting this underneath. And making a gap. Like so. So what we're doing is, we're making it big enough, there we go, and that should not quite. So I'm going to do a bit more. Get it on the hole. That should be about right. We'll have a look. That's a little bit on the other edge. And you do this in stages. I mean, there might be an easier way of doing this, or somebody might have a more professional way. Try that. And there we go. That's perfect. Okay, thank you. The most important part with this, with this on off on switch, is this the wires to the track go in the central position. Now bear in mind when you throw it that way it's those there. So these because analog is always up on my on my dual track system that is for analog and you can see we've got the insulators there so nothing is going to touch Anything touch, just forget your transformers. So that up there, and that goes to the analog controller. This one here, I'm sorry we haven't got a lot of room to show you here. On it goes. There goes the black. And you can see, so, up is for analog. That goes to the analog controller or analog transformer. Down is for digital. That goes to the digital controller. Thank you. Okay, there's our switch done. A for analog, D for digital. So we'll see if it works. And you can see all the others are off. That's analog. And there's the power you can see with the red light. Turn the lights off so you can see. There's a red light. Turn the analog off. You can see there's no power feed. Put the digital on, down. And there you go. And there's digital. As simple as that. And that's all done. Finished. Turn into a bit of a mare, but you can see it's absolutely fine. And we'll demonstrate the loco moving on digital. Now, as you may remember at the start of the video, this points like this. So there's no power. Got the isolators there. We've got it down for digital, and can you move the loco? here we go and you'll see now it runs absolutely fine if you can stop it just before the point 
all done. Simple stuff. Job done. We made a meal of the wires at the side of the track. That really was a meal, that was. And I'd also like to add, I've used metal polish on the track as well to polish it shiny, so the track is not abrasive against the loco wheels. We haven't cut a lot of it, for the simple reason we want you to see exactly what's happening. Thank you for watching. Thank you.